Well, good morning, everyone. Russ Barkley back again with another commentary on ADHD. This time we're going to talk about why is ADHD so impairing? And to answer that, we're going to have to go back and talk about ADHD as a disorder of executive functioning, which affects self-regulation. But before we do, have a look at my grandpa t-shirt that I got when we had a family reunion just a little while ago. This grandpa belongs to and my four grandchildren. And indeed, I do belong to those grandchildren. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, let's tee up our PowerPoint here and get started and talk about why is ADHD so impairing? Well, to answer that question, let's go back a little bit into some of my other videos and talk about ADHD is a disorder of executive functioning. And there I talk about the development of the seven major executive functions that ADHD is interfering with, including to begin with self-awareness, which I think of as self-directed attention, inhibition, which is self-restraint, nonverbal working memory. We know it primarily as visual imagery and sensing to the self. And then there's self-speech in the mind, verbal working memory, all of that contributes to the development of emotional self-regulation as well as self-motivation. And finally, the last EF is planning and problem solving. ADHD seems to interfere with the development of all seven of those executive functions. And as a result, it's going to interfere with the four developmental transitions in what is controlling our behavior. On the left side of the screen, we see what it's like to be, say, a three-year-old who has very little executive functioning. Over on the right, we're going to be looking at people who are at least 25 to 30 years of age and older. During this time, there is a major transition. Let me get that back again. There's major transitions in what's controlling us. In preschool years, we're controlled by the momentary now and external events. As we mature for another 30 years, we're going to be more and more controlled by cognition, by mental representations that we hold privately that have to do with our plans, our goals, our welfare. That transition is also going to be accompanied by another one. In the preschool years, we're controlled mainly by others, especially our parents and teachers. As we grow up, we begin to assume more and more of our self-control, self-regulation, and less influence by others. That's accompanied with a third transition where we go from being entirely obsessed with the now and we have little if any sense of time to as we mature we begin to anticipate futures that lie ahead and we begin to organize behavior toward those anticipated futures. Finally all of that, let's go back again, is accompanied by a transition from concern with the immediate reinforcement in the now to increasingly being governed more by delayed gratification, the future consequences that are larger and more important to our welfare. And we know that because ADHD is delaying and disrupting those seven executive functions, it's also interfering with these transitions that go on across development. So no surprise there, I've talked about all of that before. But let me go further and talk now about brain maturation and this cognitive control of behavior. So here's a diagram that comes from an article uh, back about, oh, 16 years ago by Badra. I love the, the diagram. It's just a picture of the brain, but the brain is progressing in its maturation from the central part of the brain outward <coughs> toward the frontal lobe. So as this maturation is going on, there is increasing control by the anterior part of the brain. Now, what is going on during this brain maturation? Well, a lot of changes are happening in our behavior. So with maturation, we're first of all going to see that the individual is able to, co to construct and to execute increasingly complex chains of behavior and chains of behavior that might be organized into even larger hierarchies of goals, plans, tasks, and things that we need to get done. So our behavior is becoming more complex. In addition, we're also beginning to interact 
further and further away from our home base. Young children are primarily uh, at home, governed at home with their family group. Uh, but as we get older, notice that we are beginning to venture out further into space, into our culture, into the geography around us, so that there's this extension across space of our behavior, particularly our complex behavior. Now, as that progresses, as we just talked about, there is an increasing expansion of our behavior across time. We begin to organize toward futures that are further and further away as our brain matures. And then on top of that, we also begin to value delayed outcomes more and more. We're working for those larger goals, as I've already said, that are later in time but are more supportive of our welfare. We're beginning to anticipate, to consider, and contemplate, and plan for even more abstract goals. Goals like going to college rather than just getting dressed for school like a child might be doing. So the goals that we are planning are more abstract and that leads to more complicated behavior, more complex change, chains and hierarchies of behavior. But we're also beginning to engage in increasingly complex interactions with others. From interacting with our family, mainly tit for tat, to reciprocity, which is kind of, I'll do for you what you do for me, and that's taking place within the family and then within our peer groups. And then we start to join larger groups and engage in cooperation, where the group is doing things that no individual could accomplish on their own and sharing in the benefits of that cooperative activity. And then we move on out into the larger social culture where we are interacting with many people and many different groups as we go about completing our goals. Finally, there's an increasing reliance as the brain matures on cultural products, inventions, like computers, like money, like cars and other forms of transportation. There's many different cultural products that we, through our brain, we are reaching out to incorporate into our life and to use them to accomplish our goals. Now, what's so important about this? It explains why ADHD is so devastating, because ADHD interferes with the progressive development of that frontal lobe and therefore with the progression over development of all of these different dimensions of our behavior, of our social functioning, of our cultural functioning. So now you can see why ADHD isn't just a disorder of attention. It's a disorder of executive functioning, which interferes with self-regulation across time to the future. And it interferes with all of these different dimensional changes going on as we increasingly move forward into the brain with the cognitive control of our behavior. So now we can see why ADHD is linked to so many different domains of impairment from social functioning and disruption in this domain, to educational functioning, and then employment functioning, and then managing our finances, not to mention things like driving and getting around in our culture. And finally, as I've talked about in other lectures, our health, welfare, and even our mortality. So ADHD is a very serious disorder because it dis it's a disorder of executive functioning self-regulation across time with attention to our future. No wonder it is interfering with all of these different domains of activity. Well, I hope you found this instructive so that you can begin to see that this ain't no simple attention disorder. This is a serious disorder of human self-regulation and our personal welfare. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you'll subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. And as I always admonish, please recommend this channel to others if you think they might benefit from this information. And as always, when I sign off, be well, everybody. See you next week.